In this video we're going to look at comparative advantage and understand why self-sufficiency is a sure road to poverty. Comparative advantage gives us a better understanding of trade patterns and why people specialize in what they do specialize in. And we're going to understand how that works with comparative advantage. Uh, comparative advantage deals with the opportunity cost of producing something. It doesn't deal with the absolute advantage. So you may be better than me at doing everything, but that doesn't mean you won't benefit from trading with me. I may have a comparative advantage, or I have to have a comparative advantage in at least one thing because I'm going to have a lower opportunity cost of producing something relative to you. So it benefits both of us if we trade. And we're going to come to understand that with two examples. Now, it's not an easy concept to understand. In fact, Paul Samuelson, a Nobel Prize winning economist, was once asked, what have economists contributed that was not obvious and not trivial? And his response was that comparative advantage is logically true, need not be argued before a mathematician. That it is not trivial is attested by the thousands of important and intelligent men who have never been able to grasp the doctrine for themselves or to believe it after it was explained to them. So in my objective here is that you will grasp it for yourself and you will also understand it. So let's take a simple example. LeBron James, a professional basketball player who's very accomplished and uh, earns tens of millions of dollars a year, can mow his lawn in one hour. And let's say he has a neighbor kid named Freddie, and Freddie can mow his lawn as well, but it takes Freddie two hours. Freddie's not as strong as LeBron, and therefore it takes Freddie twice as long as LeBron to mow his lawn. Now some people right off the bat would falsely assume that LeBron does not gain at all from trading with Freddie, having Freddie mow his lawn. If LeBron is more productive or more efficient at mowing the lawn, then Freddie should mow, then LeBron should mow the lawn, not Freddie. However, let's take a look at the following. Let's say that in that one hour that it takes LeBron to mow his lawn, he could be practicing and he has something, let's say that when he practices, he becomes a better player, even professional athletes still need to practice and he becomes a better player enough that some incentive mechanism kicks in and he gets more money he earns more money that year and let's assume that for every hour he practices that additional earnings is a thousand dollars that means the opportunity cost to LeBron mowing his lawn is equivalent to a thousand dollars Freddie works too Freddie works at a fast food restaurant he earns ten dollars an hour and for the two hours it would take him to mow LeBron's yard, he would forego earning $20 at the restaurant. So now we can see Freddie gives up $20 to mow LeBron's yard, LeBron gives up $1,000 to mow his own yard. Should LeBron mow his own lawn or should he hire Freddie to do it? That becomes a little more obvious now. LeBron has an absolute advantage over Freddie. He can do it twice as fast, he's more proficient at mowing the lawn than is Freddie. But Freddie has the comparative advantage of mowing LeBron's yard. He gives up a lot less than what LeBron does to mow his lawn, so therefore Freddie has the comparative advantage. He only gives up $20, LeBron would give up $1,000. So somewhere between $20 and $1,000, LeBron and Freddie have a great opportunity to make each other better off paying Freddie to mow LeBron's yard. Where it will be between 20 and 1,000, we don't have enough information to determine. But we can conceivably see that if Freddie is the only person in the world with a lawn mower and the only one who knows how to mow a lawn, then it's going to be closer to $1,000. If, however, there are many, many, many people competing to mow lawns, it's going to be closer to $20. And if LeBron really doesn't care what his lawn looks like, the weeds can grow, it's going to be closer to 20 But if LeBron really is meticulous about how he keeps his lawn, he wants it well-groomed all the time, it'll be closer to 1000 So there are many factors that would determine where between 20 and 1000 that trade takes place, but somewhere between 20 and $1,000 is a mutually advantageous trade for Freddie to mow LeBron's yard. Let's take another example, kind of similar to the LeBron example. Remy and Colette own, a rest own restaurants. Each of them has their own restaurant, and they both specialize in pork barbecue, and they serve cheesecake for dessert. And their restaurants are identical in every way, and especially the food. The food they serve is identical. The quality, the, the, the amount, all of this is identical. Let's say that in eight hours, Remy can smoke 10 pork shoulder butts that are needed to make the pork barbecue sandwiches, or he can make, uh, make and bake five cheesecakes. So the time he spends smoking barbecue butts, he can't make cheesecakes, and the time he spends making cheesecakes, he can't make pork barbecue butts. So we know that it, within an eight hour period, he can smoke 10 shoulder butts, or make and bake five cheesecakes, or we'll see their combinations in between that. And let's suppose Colette can smoke five pork shoulder butts in eight hours, 
or she can make and bake four cheesecakes. So again, the same concept as with Remy, it's just she does less than what Remy does. Can they both benefit by specializing in trade? Because remember, they can only, if they produce everything in-house, they can only serve their customers what they produce. Should they simply produce everything in-house by themselves, or should they specialize in trade with each other, pork barbecue for cheesecakes? Well, let's take a look. Here we have the pork butts and cheesecakes, and we said that in an eight-hour period, Remy can smoke ten pork butts, or Remy can make and bake five cheesecakes. And Colette can smoke five pork butts, or she can make and bake four cheesecakes. So we can see that Remy has the absolute advantage over Colette in both smoking pork butts and making and baking cheesecakes. He can do 10, where she can only do five for the pork butts. He can make four, five cheesecakes in the same amount of time. She can only make four. So what we see is that Remy is two times more productive than Colette at smoking pork butts. And he's 1.25 times more productive than Colette in making and baking cheesecakes. But this doesn't mean that Remy doesn't benefit by trading with Colette. What we want to see and what we will find out is that Remy should specialize in smoking pork butts because he's two times more productive at doing that than Colette, but he's only 1.25 times more productive at making and baking cheesecakes than Colette. So what Remy, how Remy can benefit is Remy, if Remy spends time doing the things he is most best at and trades with Colette for her doing the things she is least worst at, they both can benefit from trade. And again, here's how. The cost to produce pork butts to Remy. If Remy can produce either five cheesecakes in the time it takes to make ten pork butts, then what we would say is in order to make to produce pork butts, Remy must give up half a cheesecake for each pork butt that he smokes. And on the inverse of this, if he can produce 10 pork butts in the time it takes to make and bake five cheesecakes, then the cost to him of making cheesecakes in terms of pork butts is two smoked butts for every cake that he makes. So again, notice they are just the inverse of one another. And Colette can make or bake four cheesecakes in the time it takes her to smoke five pork butts. So what we say is the cost to Colette of smoking pork butts in terms of cheesecake is 0.8 cheesecakes per pork butt. And on the inverse of this, the opportunity cost to Colette of making cheesecakes in terms of pork butts is she gives up five pork butts for every cheesecake she makes. So we'd say it's the cost of making cheesecakes is 1.25 smoked barbecue butts for every cheesecake that she makes. Now we can see, as I said before, that Remy has the comparative advantage in smoking pork butts. He only gives up half a cheesecake for every pork butt that he smokes, whereas Colette must give up 0.8 cheesecakes. So Remy is a lower cost producer of smoking barbecue butts. And Colette has the opportunity, the uh, comparative advantage in making and baking cheesecakes because her opportunity cost of making and baking cheesecakes is less than Remy's. She gives up only 1.25 smoked butts for every cheesecake she makes, whereas Remy would have to give up two smoked barbecue butts for each cheesecake he makes. So if Colette specializes in making and baking cheesecakes and Remy specializes in making and baking uh, in smoking pork butts, the two can be better off through trade. And again, let's see how this happens. We're going to look at Remy's production possibilities on the left, Colette's on the right. On the x-axis we have pork butts and on the y-axis we have cheesecakes. And we already said that Remy can, in an eight-hour period, can smoke ten pork butts or make and bake five cheesecakes in an eight-hour period. And this orange line represents his production possibilities curve. He can spend all of his time smoking ten pork butts and having no cheesecakes, or he can spend all of his time making and baking five cheesecakes and have no pork butts, or he can operate anywhere along this line. Notice that the slope of this line is minus one-half. That means for every barbecue butt that he wants to smoke, he must give up half a cheesecake. And so if he wanted, he could have four cheesecakes and two smoked barbecue butts, or he could have one cheesecake and eight smoked barbecue butts, or any combination in between. He could have two and a half cheesecakes and five smoked barbecue butts, whatever he wants along that production possibilities. But keep in mind, he can only serve his customers what he produces if he doesn't trade with people. So he's operating along that orange line. That's the best he will be able to do. When we look at Colette, we said that Colette can smoke and uh, smoke five pork barbecue butts in an eight-hour period, or she can make and bake 
four cheesecakes in that same period, or she can do any combination. Now notice that the slope of Colette's line is 0.8. Remember, Colette faced a higher cost of making barbecue butts. She, her cost was 0.8, where Remy's was only 0.5. So the slope of Colette's production possibilities is going to be 0.8. And Colette can operate anywhere along this line, just like Remy could any, operate anywhere along his orange line. Colette, for example, could spend all of her time making cheesecakes and have four cheesecakes and no barbecue butts, or she can smoke her pork barbecue butts all day long or for eight hours and have no cheesecake, in which case she'll have five barbecue butts and no cheesecake, or she can do any combination like two cheesecakes and two and a half smoked barbecue butts. But again, keep in mind with Colette that she, if she operates an autarky by herself without trade, she can only serve her customers what she makes, and that would be along that green production possibilities curve. Now, what happens when they trade? Well, we already said that Remy's comparative advantage is in smoking barbecue butts, and he would smoke 10 barbecue butts in an eight-hour period. And Colette's comparative advantage was in making and baking cheesecakes. She would specialize in making and baking four cheesecakes in an eight-hour period, and they would trade with each other. Well, what would they trade, and how would they do it? Well, let's put this green line up here. Remy is going to specialize in smoking 10 pork barbecue butts. And let's say he goes to Colette and he says, I will give you a barbecue butt if you give me a cheesecake. Well, Colette is going to say no to that offer because Colette's cost of making each barbecue butt was 0.8 cheesecakes. So she is not willing to accept anything, will not be willing to pay anything more than 0.8 cheesecakes for a smoked barbecue butt. So if Remy spends his, ten hours, spends his eight hours smoking 10 barbecue butts and trades all 10 of those to Colette, the maximum number of cheesecakes Colette would be willing to give Remy for those 10 barbecue butts is eight cheesecakes. That means this is the maximum that Remy can expect if he trades with Colette. doesn't mean that's where he's going to be. It just means that's the best he can do. If all the gains from trade were on his side and not on Colette's, that's what he would get. Since Colette is not willing to accept or willing to pay anything more than 0.8 cheesecakes per barbecue butt, there is no way they will operate above that green line. That would be trades that she would not be willing to accept. And there's no way they would operate below that orange line because those are trades Remy would not be willing to accept. So the trade will happen somewhere between the orange and the green lines. Now for Colette, she will specialize in making and baking cheesecakes and she will want to trade with Remy and so she will produce her four cheesecakes and she'll go to Remy and say I will give you a cheesecake if you give me three pork barbecue butts and Remy's going to reject that offer because Remy's cost of making cheesecakes was two smoked barbecue butts so the most he would be willing to pay for a cheesecake is two smoked butts therefore if Colette spends all of her time making four cheesecakes or spends eight hours making four cheesecakes and offers all four to Remy the maximum number of pork barbecue butts Remy would be willing to give Colette for these four cheesecakes is eight. So that orange line represents the best that Colette could do. Notice again that Colette's, that orange line on Colette's now new maximum consumption possibilities is the same slope as Remy's production possibilities. What this says is Colette will not pay anything above that orange line. She's not willing to offer anything above that orange line. Uh, well, actually, Remy is not willing to pay anything above that orange line. Colette is not willing to offer anything or accept anything below that green line. And so again, it's the same thing we looked at with Remy. This is now Colette's opportun uh, options. She will operate somewhere between that green and the orange line, which would be consistent with operating between Remy's orange and green lines. Where they operate really depends on the gains from trade. If everybody really, really likes barbecue and not much, they don't like cheesecake much, then they're going to be operating along the green line somewhere, and most of the gains from trade will go to Remy, yet Colette will be no worse off than having not traded at all. Or if people really, really like cheesecake and not, people are not big fans of pork, then they're going to be operating more along the orange line, and the gains all go to Colette, and Remy is made no worse off than had he operated by himself. But generally, we would say that the trade is going to occur at a price or a trade ratio somewhere between the orange and the green lines. And let's take an example here. We know that somewhere between 0.5 and 0.8 cheesecakes per smoked butt is going to be mutually beneficial. Remy's cost of producing a smoked barbecue butt was half a cheesecake. Colette's cost was 0.8 cheesecakes. Therefore, 
it has to be somewhere any trade has to be between 0.5 and 0.8 cheesecakes for smoked barbecue butts we don't know where but somewhere between there but let's pick pick a number let's say the trade is going to happen at 0.64 cheesecakes per barbecue butt the inverse of this would be 1.5625 barbecue butts per cheesecake and that's simply inverting 1 over 0.64 so the trade is going to be either 0.64 cheesecakes per barbecue butt or 1.5625 barbecue butts per cheesecake before trade Colette let's say Colette baked two cheesecakes and smoked two and a half barbecue butts that's what she served her customers because she had only served what she produced and without trade the best she could do was two cheesecakes and two and a half shoulder butts but if she instead specializes in producing four cheesecakes and trades two with Remy she still has two cheesecakes like she had before but now she can trade these two cakes to Remy for 3.125 shoulder butts that's two cakes times the 1.5625 butts per cake that gives her 3.125 shoulder butts which is greater than two and a half shoulder butts why does she benefit from this because her cost of making shoulder butts was 0.8 Remy's is only 0.5 so Remy is able to offer her shoulder butts at a lower price she bakes cheesecakes trades them to Remy and gets the shoulder butts instead of two cheesecakes and she gets more than if she had done the trade done the uh, production of smoked barbecue butts herself remember she has a lower opportunity cost in making and baking cheesecakes than does Remy before trade Remy smoked six butts and baked two cheesecakes each day remember Remy's cost of making barbecue butts is 0.5 cheesecakes so if he gives up four barbecue butts he can turn around and make two cheesecakes so in this case here he was making smoking six barbecue butts and baking two cheesecakes each day but with trade he's going to spend all of his time smoking 10 barbecue butts and he's going to trade 3.125 of these butts to Colette and he's going to receive two cheesecakes now keep in mind before he had to give up four barbecue butts to get two cheesecakes now he has to give up three and an eighth cheesecakes to get uh, three and three and an eighth barbecue butts in order to get two cheesecakes so he is better off from this trade the 10 minus 3.125 is 6.875 barbecue butts so Remy is better off by trading with Colette he now has more barbecue to serve to his customers and still has the two cheesecakes he had before Colette is better off because she still has two cheesecakes and now she has 3.125 barbecue butts instead of two and a half both are made better off as a result of this specialization in trade Colette specializing in baking making and baking uh, cheesecakes and Remy specializing in smoking barbecue butts now there's one more thing to consider just for the sake of looking at this suppose the market price of cheesecakes was forty dollars a piece if that's the case within what range would pork butts sell within what price range would pork butts sell and similarly since we already picked the price of 0.64 cakes per pork butt what is the effective price of the butts that Remy is selling to Colette think about this for a minute try to work on it pause right now if you have to and try to figure this one out and I will come and I'll give you an answer in say five seconds since the market price is forty dollars per cheesecake and Remy has to give up half a cheesecake for every barbecue butt that means Remy is giving up twenty dollars per barbecue butt and Colette's cost is 0.8 barbecue butts per cheesecake multiply that by forty dollars the maximum she's willing to pay is thirty two dollars per barbecue butt so Remy will not accept anything less than twenty Colette will not pay anything more than thirty two so somewhere between twenty dollars and thirty two dollars per barbecue butt is an acceptable trade if cheesecakes the price of cheesecakes on the market is forty dollars if the price is sixty point six four cheesecakes per barbecue butt multiply that forty dollars and what this tells us is the effective price of barbecue butts at this price trade ratio would be twenty five dollars and sixty cents per pork barbecue butt